Let's talk about this guy doing the classic, oh, the LGBT flag means you're a pedophile, lol, but like in a different way, but like not really a different way. And then there's, of course, a plot twist. It's Maj Toure here. I'm out and about uh, getting some coffee about to hit the gym and things like that, but I'm in a different part of town than I normally am. In front of Definitely at least 500 yards away from a school though. Guys, uh, no reason for me to mention that, but like I probably should mention that. I, I legally have to mention that, but anyway, let's move on. Now, obviously everybody knows that this is the LG, you know, GBT flag, but I want to showcase a few things to you guys about, if you notice, you'll start to see this part of the flag adding more into the situation. Initially, the rainbow was God's promise. Now it means something else, right? But now it is more, you'll start to see more of these colors added. This is supposed to be for black people. This is supposed to be for brown people. But these colors right here seem to be a little strange. And this goes into what's called the minor attracted person or youth attracted person, pedophile flag. So I wanna go over what these actual colors mean. Blue and light blue on this flag stands for attraction to infant boys, okay? That's what this light blue is for, okay? The pink stands for attraction to minor girls. That's what the pink is for. And then the white. The white stands for attraction to virgin children that are virgins that have never had any type of sex so when you start to see these things does anyone even, I mean, I think anyone that like agrees with this is just already a fucking freak, right? Like, I don't think a, a single person watches and went, hmm, wow, I did not know that. I feel enlightened. Thank you, sir. Things, right? It went from just a rainbow, which initially was God's promise, into all of these other things. You should start asking. It. Let's be real. If that was actually a minor attracted person flag and not just the trans flag, he and many others in the right wing would be defending it and they would be waving it like a crazy motherfucker. Here is the real minor attracted person flag, okay? You wanna see the real minor attracted person flag? Here, let me give you some real examples of this, okay? Here's one. This is the this is the original minor attracted person flag. Here's another minor attracted person flag. Uh, there you go. Just, you know, steer clear of these guys, okay? They are, if you see somebody fucking waving this shit, dude, watch out. Fucking watch out, dude, okay? They have encyclopedic knowledge of the age of consent laws and Romeo and Juliet laws in every state and perhaps even uh, nation states globally. If you start talking to people like this, hold on. There's another. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull up another one. Uh, uh, another minor attractive person flag. Hold on one second. Here it is. If you see people waving these flags, remember. If you ask them about child marriages, if you ask them about like, uh, you know, why uh, people want to marry 16 year olds, for example, they're going to tell you things like that's when they're most uh, virile or they're going to tell you things like actually it's hephibophilia uh, and not pedophilia. So pedophilia by a different name, you know what I mean? So like, I just want you to understand like, get ready because they are going to debate you on pedophilia and why they should be able to do it. These are the real minor attracted person flags out there. There are many of them. There are some others that I did not get to, but these are some of the basic ones that you see all the time. Remember that. Now, why am I bringing this up right now? Why am I bringing this up while we're having this conversation about this guy who's talking about uh, the, the trans flag being uh, yeah, so pro-pedophilia? It turns out the real minor attracted person in this situation, you know, pedophile, by the way, we don't need to like use a different term for it or a person who has like uh sexually assaulted children oh that's right it's the guy in the fucking the guy literally in the motherfucking video turns out he's the one who has been charged in court as a pedophile this is literally why is it just like is every time is that what's going to happen every time the call is always coming from inside the house man you tried to get ahead of it as well and control the narrative about it i guess that's why they're doing it like why are there so many motherfuckers who have been like charged with like endangering minors sexually assaulting minors that are in the right wing grift talking about how we got to protect children from who motherfucker you you are we protecting the children from you ali alexander milo Yiannopoulos, dennis hastert very famous uh republican matt gates Update, the tractors brought attention to how the case was withdrawn. An unnamed source who works in court unearthed a document showing it was withdrawn, not because it was disproven, but the witness didn't show up, which is a common occurrence in sexual assault cases, even if the assault occurs. What boosted my algorithm and gained a few thousand followers. Question the pedo flag colors and added, uh, added to the LGBTQ flag. Waited for pedos to see. Let them use my false rape charge paperwork to deflect. Hid their replies. Let their bots at me. 
to feel like they won. Wow, I got a little bit of prominence on the internet and now everyone knows I'm a, everyone knows I've endangered a child, but I'm the one who won in this regard. It's so sick. That's great, man. Interesting strategy, man. Keep, keep up the good work, sir. Oh, here's what I was gonna say. North Face is the new target for these guys, I think. If they can like pay attention to two things at the same time, they will do that. They will uh, start focusing on North Face too, which apparently is also gay. While Target is clearing out LGBT pride merchandise from its stores, following widespread protest, a major clothier is going in the other direction. This outdoor brand has a new spokesperson, which some say is a slap in the North Face. Hi, it's me, Patagonia, a real-life homosexual, and today I'm here with the North Face. We are here to invite you to come out in nature with us. Wow, this is nice. We like to call this little tour the Summer of Pride. Is this yet another one of those like one-off marketing campaigns where they went to an influencer, which by the way, isn't even bad. This is fine. Like this is a funny fucking, this is just like a funny spot. What, what are you upset about this now? What the fuck? This tour has everything. Hiking, community, art, lesbians, lesbians making art. That's pretty yay. All right, Laura, this is like Pennywise the clown breaking into his mama's wardrobe. What is no. this? And who is the target audience here? I guess bad drag queen aficionados, uh, yeah. but I don't understand well, who North bye -bye. Wait, this implies that you're a good drag queen aficionado and you're just saying that like she's not serving? What the fuck? Like, what, what are you, you're upset because like you don't think that she's serving hard enough? Like, what the fuck is that? Not gonna lie, this analysis is a little zesty, yeah. Here's part of the North Face ad. This is Loki. This is kind of a fire spot. I'm not gonna lie. I, like what? Ladies and gentlemen, you are cordially invited to the Summer of Pride with my friends at the North Face. We're traveling. This is way more tasteful than the fucking lame ass Target Pride shit, dude. Actually, it's kind of funny. It, it's it's tasteful. All the gay across America and everyone. I mean, it's obviously right. camp, that but because it's you. drag, it's supposed to be. And you? Hello. And you? Wow. Not you, though. You're too cute. Okay, just kidding. You can come. You get it, right? Like, it's camp, camping. She's a tent. Like, I, I think everybody understood it, right? Like, that's the double entendre. Put on your boots and come out. Side with us. See you there, besties. Oh, it's from last year. Don't you think it's not this even is this year? a little intense i mean look at you you're in a literal tent right now but no this event will not be intense everyone is invited everyone is welcome it's gonna be so fun it's not even this year it's from last year why are you fucking mad why are you fucking oh god <sighs> These guys are so fucking bored, dude. This is what you do when you're bored out of your goddamn mind. Candace is so mad. She thinks it's a China conspiracy. <laughs> I, don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening anymore, guys. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if we are being invaded by China. I think it's the, I now need to believe in a conspiracy theory. I need to believe that China somehow hired all of the marketing agencies like they're running all the marketing agencies and they're the ones that are suggesting to these corporations that they go this way that they say hey here's an idea you have this customer that loves the outdoors why don't you blow up your entire customer base by putting a wait are you fucking insane north face patagonia like 60 percent of their customer base is lesbians dog what the fuck are you talking about that is the gayest shit who do you think is buying north face and patagonia shit homosexuals or the female version of that aka lesbians it's like getting upset that subaru is doing, you know, gay pride marketing. What the fuck? You can't take ownership over that now. What the fuck is this? Wait, I'm so, I'm so shocked about this. Like what? Like you can't, you, you actually, what? North Face Loki kind of tacky? Yeah, because all the fucking tech bros and finance bros wear that shit. But like ultimately those companies have historically always been lib as fuck. They've been doing pride year every fucking year. Are you stereotyping Subaru drivers? Of course I'm stereotyping Subaru drivers. What the fuck are you talking about? And I'm not the one who's stereotyping Subaru drivers. Subaru is the one who's been stereotyping Subaru drivers since like the 90s. What do you mean? How an ad campaign made lesbians fall in love with Subaru. 
It was the mid-1990s and the sales of Subaru cars were in decline. To reverse the company's fortune, Subaru of America led, had created its first luxury car. They were plain and dependable and hired a trendy advertising agency to introduce it to the public. You are what you drive. How do you advertise a car that journalists describe as sturdy if drab? The question was faced by Subaru of America executives in the 90s. From Subaru to Lesbaru. <laughs> It's an art for them. Truly conservatives don't care about research, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, there are brands that have notoriously, purposely marketed to like the LGBT community. Yeah. It loves camping, dogs, and long-term commitment. Too bad it's only a car. I wonder what that's a reference to. Hmm. Now, of course, if you tell that to a conservative, they don't understand it. They're like so dense, but like, that is, that's like a lesbian joke that is at this point basically played out. This is a cliche. Anyway, um... Drag queen in the center of a place where drag queens just don't hang out, and that is in nature. They like a nice makeup chair, they like their weaves, and they like their nails, but drag queens are not out in nature, so why do this? Has nobody learned from Bud Light? Obviously, adding this to the list... Yeah, this is really gonna fucking destroy the North Face sales in uh, Alabama. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? This is so stupid. ...of places that I will never, repeat, never shop again. There will be nothing in my home that is from the North Face or Patagonia. I, 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 it just defies reality. We must be being attacked. We, we have to. We have to be under attack. This must be Putin. Putin must have done this. Putin is sending drag queens to America because he wants to right the wrong of what's going on in Ukraine. He's going, you guys are having a proxy war with Ukraine, so I'm going to have a proxy war with you via drag queens. It's Putin. Believe that. It's the only thing we can believe in. Yeah, they're destroying our, our, our big, beautiful brands. <laughs> Folks, what's happening? They're destroying our brands. What is this? New York Post reported it. Couple suspected of buying Bud Light attacked outside a Canada liquor store. Man, I don't even believe that shit, dude. No fucking shot. At maximum, maximum, you go to a fucking Southern bar and they're they're selling Bud Light, which of course they are. Everyone does. Maximum, someone goes, ha, you're gay. Or they call you the F word or something as a joke, okay? No, that is insane. A report from the York Regional Police said that one of the sus suspects commented on the male victim's choice of alcohol. A police spokesman told Global News that the suspect believed the victim made a Bud Light purchase and uttered anti-homosexual derogatory slurs as he approached the victim. Two more suspects got involved, and the 26-year-old male victim was then knocked to the ground as a 27-year-old female victim was assaulted. What the fuck? Oh, they have him. They have the photo. Okay, it's too cold out there. That's why their fucking brain is br uh, frozen. Also, this motherfucker looks like Jack Manifold. What the hell? In Wisconsin, we had a bar fight over this, and one guy got stabbed another ended up dead over the Bud Light shit. What the fuck? Wait, what? What? Bud Light ch causing problems inside Kentucky Bar amid Dylan Mulvaney saga. Why are people fighting over Bud Light? Okay, we this is beyond salvage, dude. It's over. It's over. People will believe anything they see in the fucking news. People will believe anything they see from like right-wing broadcasters and they will go to they will go to war for it. Bud Light controversy is starting fights in a bar owner says, smoking this and that. Barbecue owner Guy Cummins. Awesome. Cummins considered removing the brand from the menu in an effort to protect his customers and potential physical fights. After learning that Bud Light sent Mulvaney was not available for mass markets, he changed his mind and continued to sell the product. Anheuser-Busch said the commemorative can was a gift to celebrate a personal milestone and is not for sale to the general public. Smoking this and that barbecue owner, Guy Cummins, noticed customers were verbally accosting those drinking Bud Light in his bar earlier this week. What the fuck? Fund anti-woke billboards across the nation. I made butt light billboards. <laughs> okay, this is kind of fire. I do want to, I kind of want to fund this. Dude, what is happening? These motherfuckers are so permanently jobless, dude. There is no way. There is no fucking way that people are this mad at like a fucking shitty ass beer. Right wing media needs to start facing consequences for the, invoking this kind of violence. I do kind of agree. I do agree with that. How do we stop right wing media from just just like choosing to create new actions, uh, like new forms of, of hate crimes. Me and my wife just moved back to Nashville where we were sent to grad school. Recently went one of her friends party to Huntsville, Alabama. Three out of the four groups that brought alcohol literally mentioned they brought Yingling because of the Bud Light shit. Probably how dumb people actually are. I just, I've looked at like some of the angry target TikToks and like the amount of people that are like legitimately schizophrenic from posting and reading too many posts is actually kind of terrifying. Like I did not think that living in a developed nation, living in a nation in the 
lap of luxury in comparison to the rest of the fucking planet and the way that they exist would, would ever lead to a situation where you will become this reactionary off of Pose. It is wild how, how willing and able these fucking dudes are to be violent. Or like Matt Walsh and like other random clout demons on TikTok who are just trying to like latch on to the hate campaign. There's a lot of Normans that I know that have boycotted Bud Light because of Dylan. It's funny because like it wasn't even like a national campaign. They sent one fucking Bud Light can to Dylan Mulvaney and then it became a national problem because the right wing saw that as an opportunity to just like invoke more tra anti-trans screeds. It's fucking cra This is not normal, dude. This is actually not normal. Like lives are being lost over fights at bars over Bud Light being gay that is wait did you say there's only one dylan mulvaney can yeah did you motherfuckers think this was like a national campaign no they sent a they sent one can to dylan mulvaney with her face on it that's it and she posted it. It was like a one-off. It was an Instagram story, I think. It was literally an Instagram story. It was never meant for like random shitheads in, in Alabama to hear about ever. It was targeted marketing. It's completely manufactured outrage. No one ever saw a Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light can. The only time you ever saw a Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light can was because Matt Walsh was masturbating to the thought of like murdering trans people and used that as another viable outlet to like create trans panic. It's insane because Bud Light has been making rainbow tall cans for years now and they're throwing a fit. Yes, because, okay, I'm going to give you an example from my life, okay? I bought one Gucci shirt and everybody got fucking mad because it was in front of their eyes and it was like a perfect opportunity to go, Hassan is rich, I fucking hate him. To say that once again, I bought more expensive clothes since then and no kind of reaction has occurred because no one has led a manufacturing outrage campaign against it. That's it. That's the point. I'm using that as an example because people react to things in front of their eyes. People are willing and able to go fucking crazy. Bud Light could have been doing pro-queer, uh, pro-LGBT uh, marketing for years and years, which they have been, but it doesn't fucking matter because people weren't as angry at it or told or were conditioned to be angry at it back then. They actually thought this was a good idea from Buddy Brown. What makes Bud Light hate their customers so much? Wait, okay, he has the Polaris, he's got the quad, he's got the fucking fat pickup. He's got it, he's got it all. You know this is fucking, uh, you know, let a real American take care of this one. Yeah, baby. You know, a lot of people tell me I should be more open-minded. <laughs> Bud Light was. How'd that work out for you? Last week, Anheuser-Busch dropped 30% in many American bars. Like, how'd that work out for you? That's Bud Light is doesn't give a shit if you're open-minded or not. They just want you to keep drinking their piss, okay? That's number one. Number two, nobody was putting this ad in front of you. The people that put this ad in front of you are people that you love, okay? They're the Matt Walsh and the Ben Shapiro's of the world. No one put this ad in front of you. You never were supposed to see this ad. This was not for you. This was targeted marketing, which... You know, we can analyze from the perspective of marketing. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, really. I don't know why they were like, oh, this is what we're going to do. But it still doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody should care. In a normal world, no one should care about this, okay? You need to be lobotomized if this is something that angers you. Draft beer dropping up to 50% in the same dadgum places. Dang, what's going on? Oh, he's a dadgum. What is this fucking reactionary Ted Lasso? What is happening right now? This is like the, the opposite of Ted Lasso. This is, this is Ted Lasso, but like not woke. No. Oh. What's happening? Let a red-blooded American explain this to you. I want you to picture this. You got old Jimmy Earl, and yeah. he's a construction. Just think about it. Just a sexy guy. You know, he's big. He's got muscles glistening in the sun, pectorals, okay? Jimmy doesn't like wearing a hard hat, but Jimmy certainly does get hard at the thought of being a red-blooded American and taking me in the back of my quad. Ooh, taking me from behind. Jimmy, do it, Jimmy Earl. Oh, God, Jimmy Earl, I love you. Sorry. I mean, I don't know where I went with that one. Uh -huh. Isn't he sexy, though? Think about how sexy and hot he is. He's a real American, just like me. A worker. He goes to his job site every day. It's about an hour away. He drives his 2005 truck that's held together by duct tape and hope. He puts in a hard day's work. He's tired, he's sore, he's dirty. All Jimmy Earl wants to do is come home to his family and crack a beer. But now Bud Light is telling Jimmy and his 100 million like-minded patriots that they're gonna have to drink something that directly stands in the face of everything they represent. Like, 
I don't think Jimmy gives a fuck, man. I don't think you should give a fuck either. Jimmy only now probably gives a fuck because dumbasses like you literally were like, Jimmy, you got to be mad at this, okay? Also, Jimmy doesn't exist, I, I, but I'm just playing along. Straight men, listen up. I want you to picture a brolic hunk coworker named Jimmy. You and him are heading to Galveston for the week because the hurricane hit. If you don't make it tonight, you might have to camp out on the F-250. What comes next is up to you. <laughs> Oh man, we gotta snuggle, Jimmy. It's getting cold. It's getting cold out here in this F-250. I guess we gotta snuggle real tight, Jimmy. Jimmy, caress me in your arms, brother. Right there in his face. So what does Jimmy Earl do? He finds another beer. Imagine destroying an entire company to appease a group that comprises of less than 1% of the population. Anheuser-Busch deserves everything that's happening to Listen, bro, as someone who uploads YouTube videos all the fucking time, okay? If your job is posting, you're gay, okay? I don't make the fucking rules. You're not Jimmy. You are infinitely closer on the sexuality and lifestyle to Dylan Mulvaney than you are to Jimmy. The guy you're fantasizing about is actually working at a construction yard. You, on the other hand, are working at YouTube. Dylan Mulvaney's a poster. You're a poster. You might as well be sucking a dick while you're talking about this stuff. You might as well have actually printed out your own Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light cans so you can fucking suck them down, all right? Straight up. It's gay as fuck. You're soy. You're gay. You're not working at the construction yard. You're fucking in the back of your goddamn... You First of all, you drive a quad. Everybody knows. If you drive a quad, also gay. Straight up. That's infinitely gayer than fucking actually uh, drinking a Bud Light with Dylan Mulvaney's face on it. Go ahead. We're the dual sport rider community out here, and everybody knows quads are gay. So that's number two. What do you want? Protection? You want security? Oh, look at me. I need four wheels. Like, you're gay. Okay? So that's, that's number one. Or that's number two, I guess. You have the most metrosexual beard I've ever seen. It's super clean. Third marker for a homosexual man. So remember that as well. Why are you fantasizing about Jimmy's pickup truck that's held together by duct tape when you yourself had to fucking sprinkle dust on your goddamn Polaris to make it seem like it was actually, you know, it was actually put to good use, being put to fucking good ass use, okay? To him, but I do feel bad for the good old boy employees that are having to put up with this stuff that they work for, you know, they work for Bud Light. This VP who made this decision, who we're going to call Woke Alyssa, okay, for Bud Light. God, got him. Fucking got him, dude. Woke Alyssa. She took a dying beer and stepped on its throat and set it on fire. She's the one that made this decision, and she's exactly what you'd expect. Educated. Hands on the hips. Gay man. In a bubble of delusion and utter madness, she was so certain this was a good idea. You know, this Dylan Mulvaney offends women and grows. Purposely and deliberately saying Dylan Mulvaney's name wrong. You know, that's sassy. I wouldn't say gay, but also kind of zesty with it, okay? I do that shit all the time. It's real zest. This is men out. You thought this was a good business decision? She wanted something that appeals to women and men, so she got someone who is neither and insults both. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. This may be a surprise to woke Alyssa. But sometimes you just want to drink a beer without a damn political lecture. You know what I'm saying? Here's the sick part. This Dylan Mulvaney does Wait, wait. <laughs> you said Dylan Mulvaney's not a man? Also woke. What's happening? <laughs> I mean, Dylan Mulvaney is a woman. I think, right? That's that's her preferred gender uh, uh, pronouns, I think. I don't know anything about Dylan Mulvaney, I, but I think she is, uh, I've been, I might've been misgendering her, but I think she's not an NB. I think she is a woman, right? She's not a man. And <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Doesn't even think he's a woman. He's pretending to be a girl going through girlhood, which is even more disturbing. The number one reason why I love seeing the huge Bud Light pushback is because it just reminds me that there's a ton of sane people out there in this country and it gives me hope because they're pushing back just like I am. The other beer companies need to write woke Alyssa a dadgum thank you letter. Thank you dadgum. for increasing our sales so much last week. It's the same thing with these woke country artists I've been fighting against for 12 years who I keep- <laughs> I'm picturing this guy Fighting against woke country artists. Like, wow, man, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your service, my good sir. Like, how can you keep a serious face when you say that? Like, you're you're fighting against woke country artists? Man, this guy, this guy's the that's a real American right there, brother. He's doing God's work, okay? Sick. This guy's a yuppie that's pretending to be rural con. Come on. Oh, 100%. Telling y'all are a bunch of dadgum actors, and you find out later on they supported BLM. You find out later on that they're all for gun control. Look, y'all, 
12 years, I've been telling y'all, and I've never sold out, I've never gone snowflake like 98% of Nashville has. And I notice when everybody finds out their Spotify and Apple Music goes down. Listen, listen. All I'm saying is the T and LGBT stands for drugs, brother. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. The point is the mass hysteria associated with this is fucking insane. And it's coming from, I think it's coming partially from the lack of like uh, things to do. These people just have like nothing else going on. Like they got nothing going on. So they're fucking bored. And also because they're like, they're angry. They're angry all the time. So they need like a vector for all of that hatred they feel in their hearts. All of the anger anger that they feel in their hearts and this is like a great villain a great target that's it it's also mostly because of algorithms and social media you know what i mean it, that that is just feeding into that outrage uh, uh feedback loop you know and mine goes up because i gotta go somewhere and i appreciate y'all because you stood by me this whole time and i was gonna stand by you just the same way each boycott i personally believe is gonna get more and more intense as we keep rising to the point of just absolute anger because we've been through this like 10 damn times already and every single time it's just another insult because you didn't learn your lesson and i want to say to the men out there since our women do most of the buying make sure that you tell your woman before she goes to the grocery store yes i want beer no do not get anything anheuser-busch just put that out there Hell, my comment sections on this channel are about one of the only things on this planet that gives me hope and makes me remember that not everybody's crazy. I love and appreciate the family that's this yeah, that's channel why has please. become. It's just also, th here's how you know he's not a real one, okay? Like, every single part of this is, like, tailored to maximize output, right? Every single part of this is, like, tailored to, to you know, <laughs> feed the algo as aggressively as possible. He's like, yeah, yeah, please comment for support. It's like Steven Crowder talking about fucking Mug Club. You know, we gotta, we gotta fight this war by joining Mug Club. It's like, oh, okay, thanks, man. Yeah, no, these guys are just doing, they're feeding into it because it's profitable for them. And it's certainly is profitable.